my name is H.W. And I'm Michael Britt. And thank you so much for watching The Kemper Show. The Kemper Show. The Kemper Show is brought to you by uh, the Loaded Kempers, available exclusively at... British Audio. British Audio, where we are recording today's episode. Last episode, uh, we talked about um, TKS Toast. We made toast. We made toast, and we made mm -hmm. a, a profile called TKS Toast. Yeah. It was a little Princeton. And uh, you did a version, I did a version. Mm -hmm. They both came from the same amp, the same microphone, the same profile. Right. But uh, It just shows you what you can do when you exactly. different people edit it. Now there's an MB we version. We tend to do much of the same edit. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we'll go through that. Uh, now there's an MB version and an HW version. And they can download both both on the brand new thekempershow.com website. Do we have a website? We have a website. Yeah, this there's pictures of us working. and everything. <laughs> I don't have time for this. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> thank you Squarespace for your easy templates. Yes. And uh, and uh, thank you everybody home for watching. Hit the like button and uh, subscribe if you uh, if you get anything out of these videos. Let's get into it. That was TKS Toast 1 MB. So that's the one I profile. Play it one more time. Let's I see what you got there. <laughs> For a reference, we should play the unedited. Let's do that. Let's jump back, and here is Toast. Now we've got just a couple effects that we brought in from the other profile right. that were there when we profiled it. All right, wasn't bad. I think uh, I definitely felt like this profile came out darker, right, than we realized, right. And some of that was too. We we weren't monitoring at all. So right. when we put the mic, we didn't listen through the headphone jack or yeah. anything to see. So we talked about in that video the importance of separating yourself from yeah. <laughs> the amplifier, and then we didn't it was do that. Bright right here. <laughs> yeah, it was bright for sure. But we just and we just had that 906 hanging yeah. over, right? But we were able to take. We just threw a 906 there. We we profiled As they would it in any bar that you play. There you go. <laughs> and then and then we uh, we listened to that profile later, and we were able to brighten it up a bit. And how did we do that? Well, um, let's let's go in here. So in here okay. we've got nothing going on. We, you and I didn't touch these, but we've right. got the definition at three point six. Right. And that's kind of the main, the first place that we would go, right? And we've talked yeah. about this on the show before. Yeah. So now I'm going to go to the MB version, and we're going to see what you did in here. You're up at six point four. I did. I thought it was a little dark. As yeah. A, as well, and so I just tried to brighten it up until I thought it had a good balance, and so. <laughs> It's not like we're not we're not changing we're not introducing something sort of artificial. No. We're just taking the highs that are there and the lows that are there and we're sort of rebalancing them with the definition control. That's what I I always think of definitions just rebalancing things. Right, right. Because right. the low end will go away the higher you get. Yeah. And the high end goes away the lower you get. Yeah. So it's just a matter it's like a seesaw. Yeah, and probably we could have got a similar sound just by <clears> moving <throat> the mic over a little bit. Or just turning the treble and there you go. Presence up and the bass down, but this is just one knob that does a lot of stuff. So you're at 6.4. Yeah. Power sag, 0.9, just, just a little. I just barely crack it open. Compressor, one and a half. Yeah. Clarity, just under maybe two. a little more than what I usually do, but. Sure. Yeah, but it's Nashville. Yeah. You gotta squat exactly. a little bit. Right, right. <laughs> so it's 1.4. It is a crutch. On the, yeah. uh, on the volume. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward here. Yeah. You're doing a couple things with the EQ. I did. I did my uh, Everything Sounds Better When You Turn It Up. You know, we it, it's true, and you and I have talked about this. It's they're they're all sort of dialed in to just sweeten things right. up a bit, and you're you're sort of adding, you know, DB, one to DB. one and a half or exactly. so troubles at one point eight. Yeah, but uh, it it, it kind of sounds, it, it often sounds better on than and it than doesn't off. sound bad with the, with them flat. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. There's just a little more bottom, it's a little a, more top. Yeah, it's like and these sweet more frequencies. It's, even though you're increasing right, everything, right. I don't know what the the yeah. curve is going to look like, but it just sounds better. Sure. Me. Sure. And then uh, effect-wise, what do you got going on? Uh, I got my, my typical stomp, which is, I years ago I took my uh, Wampler Ego Comp mm -hmm. and just kind of kept turning it and comparing it. And so I got my basic comp that you'll get in almost every one of the profiles. 50% mix. Um, slight boost on the volume. Yeah, slight boost on the volume. Uh, plus one on squash. I have the attack pretty high because I don't want it to sound squash. Yeah. Um, but you're using you you have the mix at fifty percent. I do have the so mix. That's, yeah. So yeah. So it's kind of like a parallel compressor. Yeah. Exactly. I, I get the sustain, but I also don't yeah. lose the attack. And that point six uh, probably isn't some probably isn't coming out as so much a boost, but it just sort of so relative. It leaves it yeah, level, right? Exactly. Sometimes you put a compressor on, and it since it's grabbing the peaks, exactly. You you feel like it's it's a softer signal, exactly. 
So um, that's cool. So and then the other, um, I've got a screamer stomp here, but I've got it set to morph, so you can see it's already on. Yeah, but you don't hear it. <laughs> Yeah, because you've got the mix at zero. Mix at zero, but hit the more. Wow. That's fancy. So you just hit one button and... Now, why do you do it this way rather than just turning on the boost, or turning on the, the green screen? It comes from being on stage for so many years and having to sing. Right. And when I'm singing, it's hard for me to look down. Right, right, right. And so I want... You so just, just hit the right bottom here. buttons. Right, right. So I try not to hit much of this second row. Then you can't so, miss. Exactly. Or you're it's, less it's likely It's an idiot-proof method. Right, use. right, right, right. And I'm an idiot, so it, I'm trying to make it idiot-proof. Yeah. So that's a, that's like a trick that a lot of people may not know is you can morph things down to zero. Exactly. Leave them on, and they're Delays they're the same out. way. Like yeah. if you don't want to delay on your rhythm because it gets in the way of what mm -hmm. you're playing, but you're... You can get a lead boost and, and you can turn the delay up with one button. Right. I think I'm even doing the mix on the delay. I turned uh -huh. it off here, but um, no one. Yeah, the mix is also morphing. God, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so you're going just a little, yeah. like 27 yeah. to 39. It's just a little bit. It's, yeah, it's, it's noticeable though. Subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could probably go up on that mix on the morphs. sure. Yeah. That's cool, man. I yeah. like that. And that's another thing I like about the Morph. You can do multiple things. I right. could even program a volume boost on the Master. Oh, yeah. You could do so much. Yeah. Just so one much. button and it changes all that from yeah. a clean country thing to a yeah. rock Yeah. Tons thing. of parameters can yeah. change the Morph. I think in, my, in the performance I use uh, regularly on like weekends, I'm morphing two delays and a verb at the same time and probably three or four parameters in oh, all I, of them. Yeah. And it's, re and it's really because... You know, I was just like, well, I want this other sound. I want this sound of a uh, of shimmer and this mm -hmm. and all this crazy stuff. And it's like, well, I ran. Out, I don't have any more buttons. Right. But you can you can just get there. Right. You know. So the morphed sound can be way different. One I love to do. I didn't do it on this preset, but I love using the tremolo or the rotary speaker on the morph and yeah. setting the the rise up and fall time. Sure. A little bit longer. Yeah. And so you're and playing, it, and it just kind of slowly tremolos comes in. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes out. And you don't hear like a drastic. Now he's got a tremolo. Yeah. You know, it just kind of fades in and out. You know where that's really cool is sometimes you hit, you know, the last chord of the song mm -hmm. and then a trem just sort of yeah, fades in on the, on the, on the, yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a cool trick. That's I a like really that. Cool trick. I like that. You do the same with ducking too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn Why the right? ducking up and then. Right. You're so, you're playing, so you're playing hard, you don't notice it. You just play soft and you got tremolo. That's cool. Okay, play this one more time. This is TKS right. Toast 1 MB. <laughs> Also put a rotary on here if you do want to reach up to that old second row. Yeah. Put a rotary. No, there it is. Oh, did I? Okay, hang on. I'm figuring out what I'm doing here. I think you got ducking on it. I do, and I didn't yeah. mean to. There we go. Here, we'll save that. Yeah. That's really cool. Just for fun, let's uh, let's show them the ducking because yeah. basically, if you're playing, you're not going to notice it, and then it's just going to sneak in there. Yeah, do it up about one point something. That, one point really something. Yeah. So, go. Try that. so if I'm playing hard, you don't even hear. It. Just, I like that. Yeah, there's so many cool That's things. That's cool. Can you can do that. Well, we won't save that. We'll put it back. So they can turn on the ducking if they. I've got one song I do live that I use the tremolo like that. And yeah. when, for when I'm hitting big chords, you don't even hear the tremolo. As right. soon as I start finger picking really lightly, it's tremolo. Right, it comes and in. And I'm not having to turn, I don't have to hit any yeah. buttons. It's just all hand attack. I got to experiment with that more. I almost never use the ducking. Yeah, I love you it. Know? Because it's you don't find it on so many pedals. Right. So it's a parameter that you get easily in the Kemper, mm -hmm. but you don't get. Uh, in other, you don't always get in other places. I had a rig on my very first pack. It was called duck, Octave Ducking or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I could play. I need to pull it out one of these days at one of the shows. But um, if you play hard, you don't hear the high octave. But and if you play really soft, you hear high octave. You hear so you can almost get like a synthy sound when you're playing soft. And as soon as you play hard, it just goes it just away. Goes. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Feels like someone else controlling the effects. It does. Yeah. They just took it out. It's all right here.
This is awesome. This sounds great. Uh, people and just have... my basic delays on there and basic reverb. Yeah. I have a, like, back in the old days, you can't do it on the stage, but you can store amps or stomps and effects uh -huh. as presets. And yeah, so the whole stomp Typically section. what I do is just, if anytime I grab a rig, I'll just throw my normal stuff on it right, just so right. I know where it is. Right. I often grab just a similar, like, maybe I dialed something in for a Mesa Boogie style amp and I'm doing another Mesa right. Boogie style amp, so then I just go fine. Yeah. And maybe the verb is more of a light haul rather than on a fender, I'll put a spring and a right. different delay, you know what I yeah. mean? And, but yeah, same idea. And yeah. now actually with the editor, you can do, right. you really can not, store all of those things. I think that's why they didn't bother things. putting it in, into right, the stage. Right, right. Uh, that and just extra buttons. Well, this is fantastic. You wanna know what mine sounds like? Yes, I would love to hear yours. Here we go. <laughs> It's, it sounds different. I mean, it really, um, it goes to show you can really get different sounds out of stuff. So I'm, I've kind of approached it in a different way. Now seeing yours, I'm jealous I didn't do morphing. Uh, but I'm achieving some some similar things in a, in a different way, right? So um, I've got way too many delays. And <laughs> but, oh, hey. That's it. Was that the... Uh, it's the toast. Oh, it's, Except it's ready. it's not toast. It's ready. It's, uh, it's probably hot. It's yeah. really hard to get out of here. Oh! This is what this is really hot. What Brown is this? Sugar cinnamon ego waffle. Mm, yum. Mm, yeah. Here you want half of this? Sure. This is your trying we, to pull. We're it on a Oh gosh. We're trying to eat better so we can't eat. All right, we're going to fake it. I'm going to fake it cuz I'm on keto, so. Yeah, it smells good. It smells so Let's good. Let's just smell it. Let's just I'm just going to put not... it right here oh, on the uh, Here put yours on the uh, on the top oh. <laughs> on the looper side so. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Welcome to the Kemper show. Uh, <laughs> Okay, same, similar things that I'm doing here. Let's look at the amp section. Yeah. I'm on 6.2, so a little darker. And you got a little bit more power sag. But I guess I could have just, I could have eked it to 6.4 and I would have noticed. <laughs> you, you know noticed. what I mean? I would have noticed. Same thing on the compressor. One and a half. I've got yeah. a little more clarity. Uh, all the rest the same. And uh, you're a little hotter than me, which I yeah. immediately noticed when I, I just automatically in. go to around 1.5 just because that's where 1. 4, most yeah. of the ones on my machine are. Yeah, yeah. I always just automatically put it at 1. Um, and, uh, did you know louder is better? Is it better? Louder is better. I actually, I, I didn't even realize this. I upped the treble and the presence a little bit here. So I did mine about it. Yeah. You did a bunch did of stuff. Half, yeah. Okay. So here's what I get. So on the effects, so I'm just using a light sort of, uh, spring verb, right? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty light. I mean, I, I've brought the, the millisecond or the seconds down to 4.4. Uh, which is probably shorter than a real Fender. You know, those they're usually pretty long. 40 there on the mix. I've got just a quarter note without a ton of uh, feedback. Yep. I could up that feedback, you know. But it's a very straightforward clean. I always have that compressor on. Yeah, yeah. I live in Nashville, so I wouldn't have the compressor <laughs> on. So, you know, pretty normal sound there, right? Yeah. I've got a second delay I can turn on. Ooh. And that gives me, you know, that whole sort of thing. So you just perfectly demonstrated something that I always try to tell people. What's that? If you put the delays to a tempo, to yeah. whatever tempo you're playing, you don't hear them. Right, right. Because you, well, you, you, you did a really rhythmic thing yeah. with all those delays yeah. on it. 
and they went away because yeah. they're landing on the same yep, kind yep, of plane. Yep. That's a lot of delays yeah. that you don't hear them at all. Sure. No, it's it adds, true. It's almost like a reverb. Yeah. But Sorry. it's a pitch. It's, yeah. not, it's not just noise reverb. It's, yeah, it's, it's a pitch. It's like a widener kind of th It just You just feel bigger. Yeah. Of course, now I've got a couple uh, gains that I add up here that I stack up. So here is, uh, and people will see these a lot. This is like a um, uh, soft shaper that I add in front. And it acts just, a it just pushes a little bit. So without it, it just sounds like this. gonna up it a little bit because it's a little weak so I'm just gonna I just want to have two parameters on there right? yeah only two so I just yeah and I'm gonna up it just to right there so we can really hear it a little better because it's subtle What I really like to do is add it together with this green scream. So then here's the green scream right here. Shaper is kind of like your more. Your yeah, more just a little more. And I and I, I could I could honestly I could put those two uh, together almost on one button because I oh, mostly yeah. use them the same. Uh, but yeah, when I want some overdrive on a single profile like this, I go for I kind of go for that. And then I've got on the verb just a real. Um, I've got here. We'll just turn on the soft shaper. Here's my regular verb. <laughs> And then I'm toggling to another verb. Ah. So I could have morphed. That would have been a, uh, one way to do it. Yeah. I probably could have just left on the secondary spring too. Right. But what I'm doing here is going to uh, like a larger natural kind of verb with a semi-high pre-delay. Yeah. <laughs> Basic verb, yeah. But I love the natural verb. For the natural is yeah. one of my favorites. What's funny is that's a very unnatural sound, right? That's a natural sound that's so big. It's like when right. could you really recreate? Right. It, it you know because it doesn't you have sound to be in a big cathedral or something. Yeah, yeah. And even then, it, it it's yeah. You know, we're really we're kind of taking that algorithm and making it do yeah. something you wouldn't normally do. But yeah, and I I go for stuff like that just for the real you know. Uh, and I love the trick atmospheric of, thing of toggling back yeah. and forth. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people do, some. you can do that with delays. I yeah. see a lot of people doing it with delays. Um, maybe you've got two delays, an eighth and a dotted eighth or something, and right. you want to go back and forth. Um, I like the stack delays, though, so. Well, you can't tell with the, you know, I like oh, that yeah. thing. There we go. Sounds great. It's, it's, how do I get this into mine? <laughs> uh, you can download it. Oh, really? Uh, on the uh, on the new The Kemper Show website. I'm going to do that because I'm going to steal some of these delays. Yeah, these pretty. are cool. I'll, I'll give you a performance with a ton of delays. I put a perf something called uh, five delays you must have, and yeah. the Sue's dialed in some of those. And uh, they get real, I mean, quad delays and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, you can go really nuts. Yeah. The Kemper makes it really easy to go nuts with delay and reverb, you know what I mean? I try to pare things down. Right. 
My, right. I'm always afraid I'm not going to be in the mix. Right, right. Um, even though I pay our sound man quite a bit of money. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just so always funny. afraid the more stuff I put on it, the, the further back in the mix it's going to get. So. Right. Well, that I've heard of reverb referred to as uh, 3D panning. Right. So there's left, right, and then verb makes you forward and back. Right. And I think there's some truth to that, you know? There really is some truth to that, I think, but... I saw one of my favorite shows I've ever seen in the last year. I saw Jeff Lynn's ELO at Bridgestone. Yeah. And Bridgestone's usually not a great venue for hearing music. Really? It was the best sounding concert of art. And then after really? the fact, I was reading some stuff about it, and Jeff Lynn, his front of house guy, was not allowed to use reverb on anything. Mm. Not on drums, not on guitar, not on vocals. It was the best mix I've ever heard in that room because they were using the room right. for the reverb. Wow. But it was so clear and crystal clear. And, really? And there's so many people on stage, reverb would have just probably muddied it up. Right, right. So it really just kind of depends on where you're playing, right. uh, how many people are on stage with, and all that stuff. Right. Because there's certain ballads that I do, I'll throw a big, sure. tons of delay and reverb on yeah. it. Yeah. Because we have one or two songs, it's just me and the keyboard player. And I'm, yeah. I'm kind of padding, doing the yeah. the atmospheric stuff. Well, we've talked about this. I really live on these, these sort of ridiculous, <clears throat> but they don't sound, oh gosh, what am I doing? Um, they don't sound ridiculous in uh, in the mix, you know. Here's this is my HW nose tone like weekend performance, and uh, I really sort of live on these on these sorts of things, you know. Um, Once you get everybody playing, you don't hear all the gack on it. You don't hear it, and that's even like a little morphed up thing. And and you know you can always you can always turn things off, cut it off. Right. But um, I love that. But maybe one of the biggest important things is your delays landing on the tempo of the song. Yeah. Now that's really true. There's an effect that you can that's get true. if you don't have it linked up, mm -hmm. and it's kind of cool. Van yeah. Halen always had the same delay no matter what right. tempo. But right. Generally, I like. You know, if you're playing to a click track or whatever, or just tapping it in with the drummer. Yeah. I just like having my delays land on a beat. Yeah. I agree. Well, this has been fun, Michael. Has We've it? Uh, What have we learned? <laughs> We've learned that you can get your own signature sound. And it's not hard. It's not hard it's, at it all. It was one mic draped over an amp. Yeah, and it's, it's, you know, tones in the fingers, and it's in this, and it's everything. And so, if you just play like you, and dial in sounds you like, it'll sound like you. And that's the cool thing about the Kemper. You've got so many knobs and parameters. Not so much that it's overwhelming, but you can get your sound out of it, I think. It's not limited yeah. to, if you buy an amp that just has six knobs, Yeah, that's there it. you go, yeah. Yeah, it, it, because we're combining effects and, and, and uh, EQ and what type of amp. I mean, we're, we're going to the same type of amp here. We might have chose very different right. you know, amps. I right. might have chosen something Voxy you're partial to your Morgan lately, yeah. you know? Then we could go gained up, and we could land in completely different spots. Like my Marshall for that. There so, you go. Yeah. There, so you know what I mean? So, yeah, you, you really can get your, your own sound. And I think regardless of who makes the profile, you can make it sound like you. Oh, yeah. You know? I there's, think that's, There's enough tweakability, I think. Maybe that's the lesson here. Maybe. Mine sounds like me. Yours sounds like you. It started at the same place. Right. And, and it uh, wasn't hard to do. Yeah, and so people shouldn't be afraid to... Uh, grab a profile pack, free or paid or whatever, yeah. whether that's from the rig exchange or from you or from myself, mm -hmm. and feel like, well, then you're locked into that sound or what right. that person sounds well, and like. Well, if you have your amps at home, because, you know, most guitar players have what they've liked yeah. to hear. Yeah. But, you know, you can profile almost anything. I've profiled a pod before. Yeah. You could. I have... saw, I hope I'm not no, giving ahead. away trade secrets. <laughs> we did a show with a uh, well known Southern rock band. Uh oh. And they used to use pods. Really? And so when they got Kempers, they profiled their pods. <laughs> well, and you would never know it out front. It sounded like a million bucks. Right, I'm like, right. holy crap, really? That's so funny that you would buy like a like a, like <laughs> a, two, like a two thousand dollar Kemper <laughs> to profile like a little. But the effects and they got used to hearing that tonality, yeah, and they, yeah. they still have it. Uh, there's a guy named Lincoln Brewster, uh, who's a great guitar player. He's got a signature Fender out mm -hmm. this year. And um, he played a pod for a lot of years, and uh, 
uh, we I was some people told him at Nam basically, hey, someone took your pod settings that were posted on the That's internet funny. and profiled it for the Kemper, which is funny because then he moved to Helix and Kemper, yeah. and uh, he got a real kick out of that. That is fun. Um, rumor has it he's making he might he might make public some of the profiles he's been playing, which That'd is cool. which I is cool for us. Big time know, players would do that. I wish that too. I really wish that too. Uh, well, you know, but the rest of us will just keep uh, profiling the world, and uh, they can. They can keep hoarding profiles for themselves. You're profiling the world. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just <laughs> I'm doing things slowly. You just put out a base pack. I'm on a slow boat. Yeah, my, my buddy Steve Cook that plays with Phil Vassar, yeah. uh, he helped me do this base pack. Because he was asking me about it. He wanted to use the Kemper on the last tour because we, we had two bands combined. And uh -huh. he didn't want to have to bring a cab and all that stuff. So, right. So I loaned him one of my Kempers. And he goes, any chance I can get my bass preamp sounds in it? So we profiled all of his bass preamps. Sure. And, uh, and I don't play bass. And I'm, I don't even own a bass anymore. <laughs> um, so I just sat there and, and tweaked while he, he while played. He and I kind of yeah, got stuff got some in, good tones. Yeah, I like it, and a lot of the bass players so far have liked it. So. Yeah. Well, um, I can't. I don't play bass either, so I can't give it a proper demo. But it probably sounds like this. <laughs> It's so true of music. It, it's it's so true. This is like where we can make fun of bass players. Can we? It's oh, so it's so awesome. true. Yeah, I mean, for all the genres that there are, there if you think about it, they're really mostly characterized by guitar tones because the difference in bass tones across genres are, are not very exaggerated. Right. There's things. There's techniques change a lot, yeah. but man, I know so many guys who just show up with like a very like a compressor. Maybe maybe a drive that they hardly ever turn on. They usually have another fun pedal that they never use. And then they have like a 70s P bass. Yeah. And they just go from style to style. And it's really like rock switch, not rock switch. And everything yeah. else is like, am I slapping? Am I playing with a pick? Am I doing... Just, yeah. you know, it's it's just a bass. Slapping. <laughs> slapping is only good for Nam anymore. Apparently, ah. <laughs> you go to Nam and you will hear more slapping than you will ever man. hear the rest of the year. We learned uh, we learned last week. Yeah. Slap bass is the sound of Nam. It is. It is just you don't hear it really on records anymore. No, and, and some of the old funk stuff, yes, but yeah, right. You know, hear most new records don't have any slapping. No. So all the people that slap or they go to Nam. It's just. It's like the, I can just picture them. Yeah. Leading up to Nam. Yeah. Oh, six months till Nam. I it's slap. just slapping. <laughs> it's just slap. Ba slap. And I don't mean this in a negative way. It's just that's, no. It sounds. That's all Great, but it's the, the sound aisles. of Nam. It really is. Even it, it doesn't matter what hall you're in. It doesn't matter. You could be you're far. You can get far away from where all the bass companies right. are, and there's still somebody <laughs> demoing something. It is really ridiculous. Yeah. It sounds like a guitar center on Saturday morning, but yeah. only bass players. Right. Okay, this okay. has been fun. Uh, I've been HW. I'm Michael Britt. And uh, Michael, I'm going to let you play us out. I'm going to let you play us out on your. Uh, on your go-to one here. Buddies. Whoops, you're gonna need that. And um, uh, this has been fun. Hey, check those out, download it. Uh, check out the new website. We're gonna have uh, tons of downloads coming up in the future and a whole bunch of cool stuff. I muted the monitor, sorry. And a um, uh, lot of fun coming up from the Kemper Show. And if you like it, we'll keep doing it. Yeah. If you don't, we'll probably keep doing it Well, we'll it probably anyway. keep doing it anyway. <laughs> check, yeah. yeah, check these out. You could totally get your signature sound with the Kemper. I think we proved that today. Yep. Michael, I'm gonna let you play us out. All right. Mm-hmm.